Hey everyone, welcome back to the Riftwaters Fish Room. Today we have a quick aquarium DIY tip for you. This is a follow-up to a previous video that we put out on how you can make your own DIY aquarium stands look amazing. DIY aquarium stands are awesome. They have lots of benefits to them. Customability, uh, affordability, uh, structural strength, but one of their biggest downsides is they generally don't look very good. But we showed you how you can make your own stands look awesome. And that's what we did here with this DIY stand for our 280 gallon Frontosa Aquarium. We showed you how you can use a nice veneer plywood to wrap the stand, which wasn't much of a trick. Most people could probably think about that. But the key to that project was using this plastic trim to give the stand a nice polished look. Uh, the follow-up to that is the door. I'm going to show you today how you can make a very quick, very easy door for your aquarium stand that looks awesome. And it is highly functional, it's easy to remove and put back on, and it looks good. And the key to this project is one simple trick, just a piece of equipment that you can buy very cheaply, meant for a totally different application, but we're going to repurpose it for our aquarium DIY needs. Let me show you what it is. All right, first off, let's talk about your more typical options and why we're not using those. So of course you could just put on hinges. You do a hinge up here, uh, down here, and make an actual door. And in that case, the door would open up just like an actual door for a cabinet. It would, uh, it would swing on the hinges. And that is a viable option. Uh, why did we not do it here? Mainly because I don't want this door to swing out. I mean, we have plenty of space. It wouldn't be an issue. Uh, ig ignore all that stuff. I'm uh, doing some water changes. Uh, but we have plenty of space for it to swing out. But if I'm in here doing maintenance, you know, grabbing the filter out of there, I don't want to have to worry about this door, you know, taking up space over here, maybe me accidentally knocking into it. And it's also a little harder. It's not overly difficult to add hinges, but it does add a layer of complexity to, the, to a DIY project. Uh, so we just wanted to make this really easy. Um, the other option is you could have like a sliding barn door. That would look pretty nice. And it's not that difficult either. You basically just buy the hardware and you would attach it to the structure and you would have a couple components on the back side of this door and it would just slide on rollers. And I actually thought about that it would look really cool, but it's not quite the aesthetic that we're going for here in the fish room. And then finally, perhaps the easiest option to mount a door on an aquarium stand is I've seen some people actually just screw holes through the face of the door, big enough, just big enough for a screw head to fit in it snugly. And then they put a long screw into the actual structure of the stand, and then they just hang the door on the head of the screws. Now that is by far the easiest way to do this, but then you have this hole here where you can see this uh, screw head. It doesn't look very good. Not a big deal if you're showing something on video and you don't really take time to notice it, but you know, I want everything in my fish room to look good for, for me. I want to be able to appreciate it, so I don't want to do that. So what we did here is we did what I think is the best option and let me show you how we mounted this door. Uh, first, one, let's appreciate the Frontosa. I love these fish. Sorry for the glare. I have a light so that you can see the, the stand well enough, but it, call, it does cause some glare. Ah, but I know this is a DIY video, but I can't help but show you the fish during. <laughs> I really love these guys. Okay, enough of that. Um, but first, let's, let's cover off. For this door, we just took a piece of uh, plywood, cut it to size. We, we did the same thing. We wrapped it in the same veneer as the stand. Uh, and then we did the same thing with the stand. We had this trim. We added this trimming. And I think it turned out really nice. And if you want to see how we did that, it's the exact same procedure, the same process we used on the stand itself. I will link that video. Uh, so that you can watch it if you want. But we mounted this door in a way that it can be very easily taken off, set to the side, 
And now I have complete access to everything underneath the stand, the filtration, uh, some power cord, a power strip with some cords here that you probably can't see. It's probably out of frame of the video and anything else that is underneath here. Uh, so I have this wide open space. This can just be set to the side and it's super easy to take off and then just put back on. So, and, and I think it looks good. Uh, but yeah, so the key here is a very simple piece of equipment. It's this here. Let me give you a better view. So what we have here is a simple wall mount for hanging picture frames or pieces of art. And all you have to do is just nail or screw it into the structure of your stand, uh, this side right here. And then you have a second piece right here that you attach to the back of your door. And it just, if you can see it, it's a bracket. This bracket just rests in the grooves of this piece right here. Now this is a variation of what's known as a French cleat wall mount. It's a little more involved because it has this channel right here where you can actually put a level and that helps you level this as you're installing it. And it also, I find it also helps prevent the, it helps keep the, the door flush as it hangs off of this, this groove right here. But it's so simple because all you have to do is when you're setting the door on it, it, it just drops right into this groove. And what I love about this solution for aquarium stands is you don't have to be perfect. You have this entire length. I got the, I think I got the 12 inch option. They come in varying sizes and you don't have to be perfect with it. If you set it off a little to one side, you can just scooch it down or scooch it back the other way. If you were to use uh, other more traditional picture frame hangers, um, you have to have, you have to get it perfect each time you set it down. But this, you just, as long as you're in the general area and above it, you just drop the door down, it will catch. It's great. And these are so cheap too. I think this one cost me like $12. Um, admittedly, I bought it from that big box uh, e-commerce store, <laughs> which I don't, you know, usually like to support. But you can buy this sort of thing at a local hardware store, um, home improvement store, uh, or, you know, other places online. This one in particular is called the, uh, I think it's called the Hangman Softy Heavy Duty Wall Mount. And this can support, I think, up to 50 pounds, which is more than enough to hold a door. And it's so simple to install. You just screw or nail the pieces in and you're good to go. So that's really it. That is the trick that I wanted to share with you guys. And you may not even think it's much of a trick. Some of you might have already thought about doing this. But I think it's a nice little hack, as it were. It really makes mounting uh, the door to, for your stand so easy. Like it can't, it doesn't get easier than this, and it's so cheap. So that's all, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little tip, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the frontosa some more. Ah, oh, just again, I, I love these fish. They just got fed, so the water's a little dirty, but they're also really happy because they have full bellies. Ah. But thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.